When somebody tells you that you can't turn a base model Lancer wagon into an evil wagon, what do you tell them? So what you tell them is actually, you can. We make the strings louder. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are... Uh, Put the all-wheel drive pan Sorry. in this uh, Lancer Sorry. sedan wagon thing, and we're, we're gonna make it all-wheel drive. All right, guys. So this is day. What? How many days? Oh, week two. Probably. What? Spot welds. And then what? We're done with spot welds now, though. Well, we had we had to drill out like few, four yeah. four other spot welds. Yeah, we're basically gonna weld in this panel. Sean's went ahead and did a couple more uh, welds on the pan since we had to section in that actual Evo floor pan kind of into this thing. So he was welding that stuff kind of earlier this morning. Didn't film me in any of that stuff, but essentially right now what we're gonna do is stick like basically lower this thing down. So you can see Sean's gonna do what he's good at. He's gonna fill all these holes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like filling holes with? With welds. You like welding? Yeah, I like welding. welding holes? Yeah. So, uh, Sean has been welding the holes up right here on this little floor pan. So we used weld through primer on all this stuff and especially under here so that way we don't get any, any rust. So went through and kind of prepped all the panels. We welded this little kind of chicken strip back on here because we're going to leave this in to kind of line everything up with. Cut down this so it sits level on that. Now we're basically going to weld this thing. All right, guys, I'm super stoked to be get working on the Evo wagon today. But if you guys did not know, we are giving away this 2006 Evo 9 that is equipped with a 2.3 liter stroker, 700 horsepower, and it comes with $10,000 cash. All you guys have to do is go to motionaltv.com or motionalperformance.com, pick you up some awesome merch or parts or whatever, and get yourself automatically entered. But uh, link in the description, we're going to get on with today's video. As getting this thing sitting down on the pan and we're already running into a couple issues sean what's going on oh just we gotta get it aligned buddy so we should just learn a little yeah so finding out little things the, here and there the chicken do. strip doesn't lie i've been calling this thing right here the chicken strip this is basically what we're lining everything up off of so you can see right here that's about how far the pan needs to slide forward so kind of messing with a couple little things right here just down here in the corner so got to drill out some of these welds slide the pan forward we're gonna be okay they we're gonna be okay buddy one of the more important welds done on the chassis so you can see that's kind of where we just have it overlapped so there's about two inches of overlap right there so uh yeah we got everything all lined up we got the chicken strip lined up with all this stuff and we basically got the chassis kind of self-tapped together so we self-tapped it right here we squeezed some stuff right here uh we got the rear pan self-tappered all the way around Again, a couple little self-taps over here. So now Sean's just gonna go ahead and uh, weld this guy together. But we still have a couple little self-tappers in there kind of holding everything together. But we measured about 25 times and uh, I think we're, uh, we're good. So we're actually using a new welder now. So this Miller right here is my dad's and we've had a bunch of issues with, uh, not issues, it's just, this is really meant for like, if you're welding like a steel bench or you know, like a trailer or something, this is all you have for the voltage. Whereas on, this is the new HTP Propulse uh, 220. And uh, you can actually do aluminum with this thing too with a different, uh, with a different gun on it, but, which I have as well. But uh, basically a MIG, and it has a ton of settings on it, which is really cool. So this is basically your voltage and that's your inches per minute. So you could go up and down with the voltage, but you could also go up and down with, uh, with the inches per minute and just really, really dial it in. So you can see right now we have it on stitch. So Sean is over there and we have it. So it basically pulses for 0.7 of a second and it's off for 0.3 of a second. And so what that does is it really lets kind of the metal kind of cool down since this stuff is so thin. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more with that welder later, but uh, pretty stoked on it. We were testing it, did a bunch of little test panels with it and I uh, really got it dialed in. I'm really stoked on it because normally with body work, you just, 
you just blow right through it, especially with a welder like this where there's no real adjustment. So you can see we played with it a bunch over here, just, just filling up just empty holes and doing a bunch of stuff. So uh, the cool thing is, is the fan doesn't turn on until you're actually welding, so it's pretty quiet as well. So Sean just over here uh, getting some welds. You can hear that pulse. Sean got this side all welded up on the passenger side. You can see, got the whole inside, all that stuff. Still need to weld a little corner right there, but uh, overall looking good. So the next main structure piece that we're gonna move on to is right here with these little strut towers. So what are we gonna do with those? Kinda just try and, I wanna stitch it back together as, as, as good as we can instead of just overlapping it. So I'd like to clean this up and then kinda take a Sharpie and mark where it sits, take that material out and then place this back underneath so they're flush with each other, stitch them back together, and then utilize this platform to, yeah. to weld it to the wheel wheel. Yeah, and then uh, once that and that is done, then we'll start tacking some of the, the back sheet, the pan, and then what we'll do is we'll move into the inside of the car. I think we are gonna leave this brace going across it for right now. Obviously, we're just gonna trim it up uh, and then tie it in over here, so we'll probably go ahead and cut off this top piece, kind of bring that over to the top, or kind of you can see there's a good example right here on this side where there's this line so basically you could cut this along that line right there take off all this stuff and then basically push that up against this panel right there and then just weld that whole seam together so it's kind of how that's going to look same thing down here i'll just go ahead and weld all these little plug welds in the back fix it all up and and i think this is it's gonna it's gonna work buddy it's definitely, it's definitely gonna work, work. We had our doubts for a while, but now that it's all back kind of coming together, it's definitely going to work. So I'm excited to uh, be driving it here in uh, the next couple weeks. So, Or days. It's going to be days probably. What do you think? Can we do it in days? Um, probably like two. I think, I think we should be able to have it move around in two weeks. Two weeks? Under like, its own power. If we have everything we need in the parts in time. Yeah. Maybe we'll not painted and everything. But yeah, no. I want to get it you know, wired and get the drivetrain and stuff assembled into it first and then see how it, see how it goes. and. Go from there. Yeah. There's lots of welding today though. Right.
All right, Sean. So when somebody tells you that you can't turn a base model Lancer wagon into an evil wagon, what do you tell them? So what you tell them is actually you can. And have we, do, have we done that? We've done that. Well, well we're, we're getting we're, <laughs> the pans. We haven't actually done it officially, but it's pretty close to it. So how many welds did you do today? I stopped keeping count, buddy. So we went from like a spot weld counter, which we, we never did, to a weld counter, which we also never did, but it's a lot. It was a lot. Yeah, so we, a lot. yeah, look at this thing. It's, it's officially like actually in here. So this is this little frame rail piece that goes above all this stuff. There was a little piece inside that. And then obviously we welded all this stuff. So this is kind of sandwiched and then it's sandwiched again. And then there's this piece that ties that to this that goes up into here. Uh, welded the floor, all that stuff right here and there, all those things. Uh, then coming up in here, you can see we have that welded going up the edge. And then this is probably one of the more important pieces. Yeah, the pillar. So we got that welded to the little strut tower right here. We had to shorten it because the Evo ones actually are a little bit taller. So we just kind of cut it, spliced it in. Um, what else? What else did we weld? Um, the rear pan, kind of all the way around. So we kind of went ahead and trimmed all this stuff right here. Uh, just kind of get it, getting it kind of close, kind of blending between you know the wagon. The wagon had this big hole cut out right here and in the sedan it was it kind of had the whole same hole cut out here so we just kind of spliced them together right there so now we have the evo strut strut towers or the shock towers which is uh, an essential part of the whole evo rear subframe pan all that other type of stuff and again the reason we had to do this pan was because of all this suspension stuff on on the lancer the coil over was basically right here it was kind of offset over here and then it didn't have this pickup point for the suspension. And then absolutely everything underneath the bottom of it was different. So as far as trying to get everything mounted, which is this whole, which is the rear diff uh, subframe, all that stuff, which is right here. In order to get all those pickup points, we basically had to take everything off of this thing, see how much we cut off of the back of it. And then now I think we officially have almost an all-wheel drive wagon, or at least we have the whole back pan welded in here. So, so what, I guess, what is our plan with the, the whole seat situation in this cross Probably brace? Just leave the, leave the Evo stuff in there so we can leave that bracing in there for extra, extra stability and stuff. So yeah. The and, seats will match too with the, with the front seats and we're going to do the Evo conversion in the interior as well. The, the seats will all match with, as if they came out of the, the Evo sedan. So. Yeah. Cause one of the things that was an issue was the, the height difference. So the Evo one was actually a little bit shorter, right? The pan? Like right here. The Lancer. The Lancer was shorter and this one's taller. Exactly. Which makes sense because you have the fuel tank and the drive shaft and the diff and all that stuff. So even if we put like the OEM wagon seats in here, you wouldn't have as much cargo area. And then as of right now, we don't have a set of Evo wagon like Recaro matching seats with like the black kind of pleather with like the Alcantara st centers. So as of right now, basically we'll be able to put the Evo 9 Recaro front seats in it and then have the Evo 9 rear matching seats. So the whole interior will, will basically be an Evo. Exactly. So be sweet, man. Yeah. A few more welds to touch up underneath once so we get it up in the air on the lift and then yep. uh, put Yeah, the it's officially back like, on it and get the like it's on it. it's on the lift right here. The whole back okay. is kind of hung off of it. Um, you know, I mean we could have braced it, we could have we could have did a lot of stuff, but again, this is our first time ever attempting this doing this tough type of stuff and i think that you know it's gonna work yeah i mean that's that's what it is so uh so yeah i'm pretty stoked about this i'm honestly really stoked about this welder so you want to you want to tell them about the welder real quick i love it it just has so many different settings and adjustments on there you can really fine tune it to the material you're working with yeah so how i was explaining or how i was going to explain this at the beginning of the video yeah so you can see right here so right here we're on MIG 2T. So this is basically you just pull this, pull the trigger and it, it blasts out. This is 153 inches per minute. And then you can see the voltage. So we have it turned down from like kind of the fac factory setting. So you can see if you adjust this thing, it's 16 volts for 153 inches per minute, per minute. And that's basically what, HTP kind of has the settings, the base settings, and it'll show you the thickness of the material that you're welding, and that's an exact match. But when you're doing really, really thin metal, sheet metal stuff, especially bodywork stuff like this, uh, you just constantly blow through the material. 
especially when you're working with a big uh, with a big welder. So this welder right here, this is a Miller 210, and you can see the voltage adjustment right here. So you have your wire speed, which you could adjust, and you could kind of dial that in. But as far as voltage, literally, it's one, two, three. So always turn it at one, and man, it would it would always blow through stuff. You turn it to two or three, and you'd weld like, you know, uh, like eighth inch plate or stuff like that for like control arms, and it was fine. But there was no fine adjustment whatsoever. Whereas this thing. You can literally come right here, crank the voltage down. As you've seen, we had it negative three volts. So instead of it being, you know, 15 or 16 volts, now we're at 13 volts with the same inches per minute. And we also had it set up on a pulse. Really, really stoked uh, about these HTP machines. I have not tried out uh, the TIG welder yet, uh, but that thing has a bunch of other features and a bunch of cool stuff that I'm really excited to, uh, to kind of get into. Yeah, well, awesome. Lifesaver. Yeah, sure. and uh, I would say like, that made this whole process so much better. Absolutely. So you could see even just welding like this thin metal right here, that is super thin stuff and able to just kind of stack stack it on there. And you could even see he was he was bridging that crazy big gap yeah, right that, there that on the end. Looks like poopy, but. Yeah, I mean, but overall, like that's really good With given the, the circumstances of literally material. like how thin this yeah, stuff actually it. is. So. Yeah, I picked up this uh, this welding cart today, so got this thing all adjusted. So now we have the MIG welder, we have the TIG welder, we have the argon, and then we have the argon with the CO2 mix. I have all of our uh, you know all of our tips and stuff in there. And if if anybody ever tells you you can't turn a base model Lancer wagon into an Evo wagon, this is what you got to tell them. You just got to tell them that you can. So definitely a lot more work than we initially thought, but it's coming together. So I'm really stoked about this thing. Uh, we need to get the rocker panels and the wide body quarters and the doors and the front end and the Evo radiator support and all that other type of stuff. So lots and lots of content. Uh, sorry, it's taken me a little while, you know, as far as video wise, but literally we've just been in the shop working on this thing and, and just trying to get it to come together and get it to come together nice. So uh, sorry for the delay on the videos, but if you guys are stoked on this thing, be sure to hit that subscribe button, notifications on. And uh, if you guys want to win an Evo, freaking Evo over there, 700 horsepower, $10,000 cash. But uh, link in the description. We'll see you guys later.